household, we're kind of a house divided. I love spicy food and my husband does not. He does not have a taste for spice. I've joked before, I don't know how we got married. I absolutely love the hotter the better. Um, whereas he um, prefers mild, to put it lightly. Um, so what we're gonna do is make some mild enchiladas, chicken enchiladas, and then at the very end, like a lot of dishes I will make, I will separately kind of prepare mine and add a little bit of spice. It's always easier to add spice than to omit it, obviously. I've made that mistake before. I've like tried to sneak in um, peppers and he definitely, he'll sniff them out. So probably not the best idea to try to sneak in anything. I've heard people doing that with like veggies with their kids, but um, a lot of times people can sniff it out. So what we're gonna start off with, this video is kind of, um, I'll admit some of the things I've filmed out of order here because I was like, this is gonna be kind of difficult to show you guys how to put together the enchilada sauce and whatnot. So um, I wanted to do it, it'll be produced in order and hopefully not confusing because this is like a super easy, simple recipe. Um, so starting off, we're gonna do the enchilada sauce itself. So I already have, as I've done before, kind of pre-measured um, amounts for the sauce. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it, heat it up on the stove. So this is just two tablespoons of flour. Again, I'm a big fan of all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour, whatever you guys have on hand. Um, I feel like almond flour or like a non-wheat one would probably even work for something like this, like a sauce, because you really just want like that rich consistency. Um, I have two tablespoons of canola oil. You could certainly use other oils in a pinch, like olive oil, canola oil. It's not my favorite, it's not the healthiest, but um, I do like that it doesn't have like an overpowering taste. So I think there's a reason that that's why it's called in certain recipes. Um, half a teaspoon of pepper. And half a teaspoon of salt. Whoa. And then I'm going to add two cups of chicken broth, chicken stock, whatever you have on hand. Again, we are all about versatility. Again, this is just adding a little bit of flavor, you know, chicken enchiladas, chicken stock, if, even if you have like beef um, stock or broth or, or veggie. If you wanna make these uh, veggie enchiladas, go for it. So um, I'm just adding about another cup to this. Um, so now that we have this, I'm going to add, this is enchilada sauce. Um, the recipe that I'm using, I, it actually called for a large can of the 28 ounce enchilada sauce. Again, we are under quarantine. I used what I had in the pantry, which was three 10 ounce um, enchilada sauce, uh, sauces, cans. So I'm just gonna add that to everything else I already poured in. And then I'm gonna heat this up over the stove. And I'll show you guys in a second, it'll get all rich and creamy and we're gonna combine it with our chicken and our onions and then the fun part is preparing. Strategy. All right, so this one's 
looking pretty perfect. It could be a little more brown, um, but we're gonna go with that because we have kind of these to do. I already prepared my sauce, which is sitting on the stove over here. I have the tortillas. Um, prior to everything, putting it together, another step would be easier is you can use a rotisserie chicken, but I just like had a uh, organic chicken breast in uh, the fridge, defrosting all day. So I have spiced that up. I've been cooking that up. I have some onions with it. The last step is the last part of the filling for enchiladas, which is some sweet corn that was frozen. Again, super easy, something most people will have on hand. So I'm just gonna add this. Um, this is a 16 ounce package. I'm gonna use about eight ounces, so about half of it. I don't think we, you don't wanna like overwhelm enchiladas with corn. You want it to be able to soak up all that delicious, yummy sauce and cheese. And um, yeah, it's gonna be delicious. guys my amazing enchiladas we are in the home stretch look how good they look so I did the whole a lot of this recipe it's not difficult but it's time-consuming because it's kind of repetitive so I've dipped all my um, ground enchiladas in this amazing green sauce mild sauce but again other recipes you could make it uh, spicy um, they're perfect and browned and they're gonna be crunchy and crispy and um, cheesy and so I have those uh, with the filling inside of them. I have a little bit of the green sauce left. So the last step before I pop these babies in the oven, I the remainder of the enchilada sauce all over these. So good. I put that in the area that's uh, on purpose, not on camera because it's kind of a hot mess. And uh, I'm taking the remainder of the cheese. I filled these with cheese already. We're gonna have even more amazing, yummy, bubbly cheese on top. All right, you guys. So here is the amazing final product. We have our chicken enchiladas. They look amazing and ooey and gooey. <laughs> I hate that word or that phrase, but the last little step is adding a little bit of cilantro, fresh or dried. I got this actually at Target. It's kind of a hybrid of the two. I think it um, contains a large bunch of roughly chopped organic cilantro, lightly dried. So it's kind of an in-between. I got it in the, uh, not the frozen section, but like the refrigerated section. 